now comes uh, the task of deriving system equations okay now you know how to model simple simple systems simple physical systems the beauty of bond graph is that once you have got a graphical bond graph model before you and once it is completely causal you can very systematically derive equations the equations of dynamics which govern the behavior of this system okay so uh, this a uh, process of deriving system equations we will explain with the help of a simple example so here we have uh, a spring mass damper system and we have already seen its bond graph you know how it is modeled in our previous lectures we have done this exercise uh, the force is applied here to this source of effort uh this mass is modeled using this i element the spring and damper they also share the same uh velocity across their ends so they are directly coupled on this one junction now it's the i and the c elements which contribute states i contributes a momentum and the c element contributes a displacement generalized displacement so in this case it's a linear dis displacement so now uh, we will start with the task of deriving equation so you know that you have two state variables that means it's a second order uh, system you start simply using two questions one question is related to the output of the elements so you have to ask this question to the elements that are connected to the system what do the elements give to the system or what is the output of the elements so this question we are going to ask to the sources first then the the ci elements and finally the r elements so what do the elements give to the system do they give effort or flow uh, that is what we will be asking and we'll do this for all the elements starting with the sources so this source what is it giving effort or flow to this system you can look at the causal stroke <coughs> it is giving effort this effort is effort four and it is the force that is being provided by this source so the source of effort is providing this uh, force here okay then you can see what is this i element providing to this system effort or flow look at the causal structure the causal stroke is towards the i element so it is receiving effort and it is giving flow so the flow is in terms of its state it can be written as p1 upon m p1 is the state associated with the i element m is the mass associated with the i element so p1 upon m this relationship we know for simple newtonian mechanics then we have the effort provided by this c element the effort what is the output that is this c element is producing it is causal stroke is away from it so it is providing a a force an effort and we know that a force is k into q k into q2 q2 is a state associated with this spring and what is this r element providing to this one junction it is r multiplied by the flow 3 okay uh, we know this uh, if it is a linear viscous damper uh, we know that the resistive the opposing force the frictional force due to the damper will be proportional to the relative velocity across its ends 
So effort three is equal to R into flow three. But you see here flow three is not yet known in terms of states and parameters. So comes the question, where does this flow three come from? It comes from this one junction, which is the bond which brings in flow into this one junction. It is this bond one. The information of flow comes into this one junction from this bond one. OK, you can see the causal strokes. All the bonds, their, their causal strokes are here only for one junction. The, it's bringing in information of flow. So this flow three can be written as flow one because this flow three is actually coming from one junction, which is a common flow junction and only one bond is bringing it in. That is flow one. So effort three is equal to R into flow one. And you already know flow one in terms of states and parameters. You already know it in terms of P1 and M. So you can write it as effort three as R into P1 upon M. So the first set of first set of questions is. What do the elements give to the system? We have got on the right hand side all these answers in terms of states and parameters. OK, states P, Q or parameters M, K, R, F, etc. Now we proceed to the second part. That is, what does the system give to the elements with integral causality? So this is actually a question related to inputs to the elements with integral causality. So what is this system giving to this I element? What is it giving to the C element? There are no other elements having integral causality. It's only the I and the C elements which can have integral causality. And here in this example, both of them have integral causality. So we'll ask the question. We'll ask the question. So we'll ask the question. What does the system give to the elements with integral causality? So it gives effort one. So this system gives to this effort one. You can see the causal stroke. The system is giving effort to this element. So effort in terms of its state is P1. Okay, it's just the rate of uh, a P1 dot, uh, rate of change of this P1. Okay, P1 dot. It's a time derivative of P1, which is the momentum associated with this mass, linear momentum. And this mom this change of momentum comes from what? From where? From this one junction. This effort one is equal to effort four minus effort three minus effort two. You can see effort four is equal to uh, effort one is equal to effort four minus effort three minus effort two. That is shown here because it's an effort summing junction. You already know what is effort four FT from the previous question. You already know what is E2 from the previous question. You already know what is E3 from the previous question. So if you substitute that, you will get rate of change of this momentum, linear momentum is equal to FT minus KQ2 minus R into P1 upon M. So this is a differential equation of the first order. OK, derivative of this first state, the rate at which this state is changing is governed by this equation. On the right hand side, you just have states and parameters. The states are P1 and Q2 and the parameters are K, R, M, F, etc. This you asked to the I element. Now you ask the same question to the C element. What does the system give to this C element? Does it give effort or flow? Look at the causality. It gives flow. See, the C element is giving effort to the system and the system is giving flow to it. 
so flow 2 flow 2 can be written as the rate of change of this state q2 dot just like we did over here okay p1 dot here you have q2 dot and this q2 dot is coming from where it's coming from this one junction this flow is coming from this one junction which is the bond bringing in information of this flow it is the bond one so q2 dot is the same as flow one and we know what flow one is from the previous question it is just equal to p1 upon m so q2 dot is equal to p1 upon m and uh, we have these two equations we can arrange them in a matrix form uh, we can keep the derivative of the states on the left hand side we can have the vector of states over here and uh, the excitations the inputs uh, in terms of sources over here so if you if you do this uh, you can you can see that p1 dot is equal to minus r upon m into p1 minus r upon m into p1 minus k into q2 minus k into q2 okay plus f into t plus f into t so that is the first row which corresponds to the first equation second is q2 dot equal to p1 upon m q2 dot equal to 1 upon m into p1 which is p1 upon m plus 0 into q2 plus 0 so you can see that these two equations can also be written in a matrix form like this. Okay. Usually this form is used in linear control theory. It's very popular in linear control theory where your uh, we, we consider this um, uh, set of first order differential equations. Um, we say that they are in the first order state space form because you're expressing this in terms of <coughs> the space of the states okay state the state space form this is first order state space form the left side is uh, <coughs> just having the first derivative first time derivative of the states the rate at which these states are changing okay <coughs> now we will see how this uh, you see we got two equations but this system is quite well known to us. We are very familiar that we get only one differential equation for this system. Uh, when you draw the free body diagram for it, uh, you can see that uh, if you draw the free body diagram, you take the mass, uh, you apply the, uh, let's say it moves with the velocity V given by Q to dot, and you apply the force Ft on it, and you have the force due to this damper and due to the spring opposing it. Now, if you uh, write the equation for this equation of motion for this based on this free body diagram, uh, you apply Newton's second law and you get the rate of change of the momentum of this mass, that is mass into acceleration is caused due to the resultant of the forces acting on it. So here you have F of T minus R into Q2 dot minus K into Q2. OK, the resultant of the forces acting on it. So if you rearrange this, uh, bring these terms to the left hand side, send this FT to the right hand side. This is a single second order system because here you have Q2 double dot. Q dot and I'm sure all of you are familiar with this equation. This is the equation for the system which we just derived. But using bond graph, we got two equations, not one. We got two equations. First, uh, the second equation was Q2 dot equal to F1, that is P1 upon M. Okay. And the first one was P1 dot equal to F of T minus R upon M into P1 minus K into Q. Now, if you take P1 and write it in terms of Q2, 
you will get m into q2 double dot is equal to f into t minus r upon m into instead of p1 you write as m into q2 dot minus k into q2. Now you compare these two equations. They are equivalent. You see, this is a single first order. Uh, this is a single second order differential equation. You have got here a single second order differential equation. The same thing. If you take these terms to the left hand side, you'll get the same thing. What we can see here is that you have two choices. One is either you express the dynamics in terms of one second order differential equation or you express the same dynamics in terms of two first order differential equations. Okay. And what we get from bond graph is two first order differential equations. And of course, this is more convenient for numerical integration when we want to do the simulation. It's also convenient when you want to do uh, designing of control systems because the modern control theory makes use of the state space approach for design. It uses equations in first order state space form for the design. You see both these are therefore equivalent. The same equations except that here you are showing in terms of two variables. Here this is in terms of one variable. So it's a second order uh, system. Here it's a uh, two first order differential equation set of two first order differential equations. 